Hi everybody. So in this video, we're going to look at how we sketch different equations involving e to the power of x. So I've sketched e to the x here, and we know the intercept is when x equals zero. So we get y is equal to e to the zero, and e to the zero is just one. And this will have an intercept of one. And we have an asymptote around here, because if we let x tend to negative infinity, then e to the negative infinity becomes 1 over e to the infinity and 1 divided by a very large number tends to 0. So this is why you get the asymptote at y equals 0. And then as the value of x increases, e to the x increases exponentially, which is why we have this deep increase here. So this is y equals e to the x. And if we say this is our function of x, then we can use function notation to sketch each of these. For question a, we've got e to the x minus 1. So in terms of function notation, this will be f of x minus 1, which we should know from our work on transformations is a horizontal translation of one unit to the right. So this would be the translation vector. So what this means is it will translate the entire curve one unit to the right. So it looks like this in blue. We know at this intercept that x equals 0. So if we substituted 0 into here, we would get e to the negative 1. So at x equals 0, we get e to the 0 minus 1. Then we can write this as a fraction as 1 over e. So this will be our intercept here. And then this point will be translated to the point 1, 1. Okay? So for part b, y equals 2 plus e to the negative x. Well, again, if we begin with e to the x, we know this e to the negative x becomes f of negative x using function notation. And this is a reflection of a curve in the y-axis. So this would look something like this. And then for this positive 2, in terms of function notation, it would be f of negative x and then plus for 2. So we've reflected in the y-axis, and then this positive 2 would be a vertical translation of two units up. So all we're going to do is translate our reflected curve up by two units. So this will have an intercept of positive 3. So I'll mark this on a graph here. But we also need to show the equation of this horizontal asymptote. Well, if it was at y equals 0, and we've translated it two units up, this will have an equation of y equals 2. So it's all about building up one stage at a time using function notation. If we look at question C, we'll begin with y equals e to the x, and we'll call this f of x. So then the first thing we need to do here is to sketch e to the 2x. In function notation, this will be f of 2x. So this will be a horizontal stretch. We know that as x tends to negative infinity, it will still be approaching y equals 0. And it will still pass through this intercept of 1 because we're only stretching the x values. And then from this point, the curve will increase in this direction. So I'll call this f of 2x. And now we can consider the half. So building this up, this will be 1 half of f of 2x. And because the half is on the outside, we're scaling the y values. So you can see the intercept of 1 will become an intercept of 1 half. The horizontal asymptote will remain here, so I'll pass through one half, and then increase between the blue and the red. So now we've got one half of e to the two x. Now we need to consider this negative. And using function notation, it'll be negative one half of f of two x. So all we need to do is because this negative on the outside, we'll reflect this green curve in the x axis, so it looks like this. And because this is just above zero, it will reflect to being just below zero. And this one half 
will reflect to be a negative one half. So I'll label this on my diagram here. And then finally, the positive four, we can move to the other side of this. So in function notation, it becomes one half of f of two x plus the four. And then we can see that this positive four gives us a vertical translation of four units up. So this negative one half becomes 3.5 and the asymptote which is just below zero goes to just below four. So I'll mark on the intercept as seven over two. And the equation of the horizontal asymptote as y equals four. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea on how we can build up our different sketches using function notation. In the next question, we're going to look at finding the equation of a transformed curve. Okay, so in example two, we've been asked to find the equation of this purple curve in this form. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use e to the x, and we're going to transform it in stages until we get to the curve looking like this. So we know this is y equals e to the x. The first thing we should notice is that the curve has been reflected in the y-axis. You can see the asymptote is on the left-hand side, but in the purple curve, it's on the right-hand side. So this means we're dealing with e to the negative x because it's been reflected in the y-axis. So if we say that f of x is equal to e to the x, then we need to sketch f of negative x to give us this. So we'll reflect this curve in the y-axis. So at this point, we know that b is negative one. So now if we reflect this in the x-axis, you can see it will go in this direction. And that's the same direction as this purple curve. So now we need to sketch f of negative x to give us negative e to the negative x. So this intercept at one will go to negative one. And this asymptote will be just below the x-axis. So at this point, we know our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, and this becomes translated to y equals three. So if we move this up by three units, we get the same asymptote, and when we move this negative one up by three units, it gives us an intercept of positive two. So in terms of function notation, we'll have negative f of negative x plus that positive three. So I'll mark on my diagram, now we've got an intercept of positive two. So we know that a is negative one, b is negative one, and the c is positive three. Okay? Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the full lesson from my website, mrmathematics.com. I'll leave a link in the description below.